Hello and welcome back to the Yogi Spod. Let's get straight to the question. Namaskaram. I am a chartered accountant by profession. I did Sadhana Pada in 2021. After I did Sadhana Pada, I feel I am more confused and lost in life. One reason I took a break and did Sadhana Pada was that I was unhappy in my profession. Things were not going well and I wanted some clarity as to what to do in life. Now I'm confused, feel lazy and directionless at times. At the same time I have this desire to travel around the world, explore different places and cultures, live a nomadic life etc for which money will be needed. What is happening is neither am I fully focused on my career and finances nor am I fully willing to be a full-time volunteer there is some hesitation this is resulting in pain agony and discontent by Kiran I've left some parts of the question out just the necessary details we have put in and another email um, I have from another CA <laughs> in a similar situation and I'll just add this to the question and he says I am trying to make a career change and I don't want to do a job that does not help bring positive change to society. I am a CA and skilled at audits of finances and corporate processes but I don't want to do it because it does not contribute to a better society. Conversely, it only helps companies legally get away with mistakes. This question is by Rishi. All right. We will answer this question in two parts. we will first focus on the intrinsic aspect and then the extrinsic whenever faced with an issue people always want to jump to what should i do which is the action or the extrinsic aspect but if you bring your attention to the underlying things you will know what to do once we address the internal aspect the external or the action can be easily formulated so now to begin with we will address the intrinsic Now although you seem to be troubled by these questions I am glad that they have come up with the new I feel that when such questions come uh, like when you ask yourself what am I doing with my life in a professional sense even it is a huge blessing it's a calling from life to invite you deeper into itself those who answer this call face these grueling questions again and again every day and if this has happened to you you may be led to believe by society in general that there is something wrong with you but it's quite the opposite because this question leads to a life which is meaningful to you which makes sense to you it leads you to fulfillment it may or may not be the thing that you do forever because it's not necessarily about uh, fixing something permanently on the outside but with this line of questioning you're definitely moving towards that life which is truly worth living one that makes you excited to get up in the morning and to actually look forward to the future but most people don't know what that feels like unfortunately because one they did not have the courage to face the grind of this question so they have settled with a more normal acceptable way of living which is just dragging yourself to work on zombie mode just get through the week living only evening to weekends for a paycheck such people are very easy to identify they are usually the ones who complain about everything they know how to fix everything else but their own lives they are frustrated and they will always find excuses for not living a life they truly desire if this is your current state please do not be insulted i have been there myself so be grateful that your awareness has come to a place where you're faced with these questions when you feel kind of pressed up against invisible walls you have the possibility of breaking these walls and allow yourself to occupy a more vaster space then you grow until you hit a new wall and you break that too and you keep doing that until you don't have to which seems like such a long way ahead to be honest i wouldn't be too concerned about what happens when you can't find the next limitation to break anymore but the reason this question is coming up is because currently you do not see meaning in what you do you do not see yourself contributing to the bigger picture as you put it what you do externally through the day is a reflection of your inner state if you find what you're doing through most of your day is not in alignment with your life within then you must make an effort to figure a way out 
you must chalk out the necessary steps in changing the external to better suit your new level of awareness. Having said that, please know what you're doing on the outside does not matter as much or matters much less than the why you're doing it and the how you're doing it. This is why focusing on the intrinsic is way more important than the extrinsic. Because the source of your action is from within. That is why we must address the within first. And the action becomes a mere symptom or a consequence of it. With this, we are also focusing on the context more than the content. In spirituality, we are only setting the context right. Because we know that just tailoring the content does not help us that much. Now, I'm re-emphasizing certain things. To be spiritual means to be conscious in a way. To be conscious is an arduous process, but it is an inevitable step in one's growth. It is easier to be unconscious about your life than to be conscious. To be conscious in this context, as we have discussed earlier, doesn't allow you freedom from your uh, patterns or the conditioning of society. It is a fixed mold you're expected to sit in, but there is no freedom here and hence no growth. Although it may seem to be the more comfortable option at first, being conscious means whether you intend to or not, you will end up rocking the boat. You will disturb the way things are going in your life and probably for a few people around you as well. Because breaking patterns means that you're questioning the way things are going and refusing to normalize it. Being miserable in your job, miserable in your relationship, cursing the government and the way things are is normalized in society today. But if you think life can be more than this, then you have the potential to be something great. Not great in the sense of a hyper successful flashy billionaire maybe. It can be, but <laughs> this kind of great has to do with when you think about something greater than yourself. Or you have a larger identity, if you will. This can be done by a yogi not known by anyone, but with him just sitting in a cave, his contribution to human consciousness is beyond compare. This can also be done by someone who is just sweeping the floor, or a scientist looking for a cure of a disease, or anyone else. It doesn't matter. We must do what is within our awareness today which includes outward action, our thoughts, emotions, everything that falls in our awareness. However small or big our impact may be, it is our responsibility, it is our spiritual path, it is our dharma, our life's purpose to do it, or to strive for it at least, and die a failure. A failure like that is a huge success in the eyes of life. Now coming to the extrinsic aspect, this is a quote by Sadhguru, idiots do things they do not like, intelligent ones do what they love, a genius shall do what is needed joyfully. Now let's rearrange this to reflect the hierarchy of growth. The intention is to have a conceptual map for you to move upwards in these categories as you grow progressively as a human being. Let's start from the bottom now. I do not see any purpose in getting better at doing something you don't like doing, only to be rewarded with doing more of that. This is how the lowest tier functions. This is quite common as we are not given the time or space to truly choose what we want to do in life. Or our choices are heavily influenced by external sources such as our parents and society. So let's take the example of chartered accountants. If you don't like anything to do with handling finances and Excel sheets repulse you like they repulse me, then you should find something else to do. Because what's the point in being good at something but you hate doing it, but now it's bringing you money and the promotions are happening and you find yourself sinking more and more into doing things you don't love. But if this is the kind of work that excites you, then you just need to find a job which also aligns with your higher goals. Please take into account all jobs and career paths have challenging bits, paths that suck basically, and the good paths which makes bearing the negatives worthwhile. So if you love crunching numbers and accounts and all that stuff, you will find yourself in the second category. 
I think I belong in the second category of people. I love what I do and I do what I love. I see a million obstacles and negatives in my way, but I own it. The rewards and all the consequences. After the initial investment of time and energy and the struggle of understanding what I don't like doing, I now know what I love to do. So now I do not have any distinction between work and life. My life is my work and my work is my life. Monetary reward becomes secondary provided you are good at what you do. Money can empower and enhance your work. There is nothing spiritual about being poor. But one should not put money as their primary motivating factor. It needs to be there on the list, for sure, but not at the top. Because if you do place it higher than everything else, you will compromise on everything else for money, including your well-being and happiness. And you will automatically enter into the third category, the idiot. And the number one reason is money. Ask anybody, they do it for the money. Whether it is for one dollar or one billion, it doesn't matter. But you know, you can always call me privileged, which I am. But I don't think money should be used as an excuse. Because what do you call a person who will do anything for money? See, I would sympathize with you, but that won't help you in any way. That won't help you become any less miserable doing the monkey dance for pennies. You don't just happen to find a happy life, you have to make it. Now the top category, the one who does what is needed. This is a state of selflessness and devotion. Devotion to what you may ask? Some God? No. Devotion to all life. There is no what about me here. Such people have no fear or concern for themselves. Only people afflicted with a crazy kind of love with life can know this. Such people will always find their way. Nothing more needs to be said. All right, let me directly answer some of your questions before I leave you with some of my questions. Now, you say, I'm trying to make a career change and I don't want to do a job that does not help bring positive change to society. I'm a CA and skilled at audits of finances and corporate processes, but I don't want to do it because it does not contribute to a better society. Conversely, it only helps companies legally get away with mistakes. Now see, there are so many holes in your approach. Could your qualification, which you have worked so hard for, I'm sure, can it not be used for good? Can you not find organizations which are having a real positive impact? I know it's difficult, but I'm sure there are a bunch of people who have similar intentions as you and are driven to have a positive impact in the world. You just have to find them. Or maybe take the first step yourself. If you see a gap in the market, you fill it up. But it doesn't matter whether you're a lawyer or a CA or a doctor. Your skills and expertise are there to execute specialized tasks. They are not inherently good or bad. If you're a brilliant CA, you can use your accounting powers for good or bad. It's always on the person. Now my question is to you. How do you define spirituality? Or to be more specific, how do you define a spiritual career? So is a chartered accountant a spiritual career path? Well, in your current definition, it is not. But what if you were a CA for me? <laughs> I don't know, am I spiritual? Or maybe you become a CA for an organization that does spiritual work or charitable work. Is that spiritual in your eyes? What about money? Is money spiritual? What if it was money given directly for charitable work? Or what if you donate money to someone so that they can work on themselves spiritually? Like if you donate money to an ashram, you're feeding the monks in it along with the other people, but that allows them to carry on and focus on their spiritual work. Somebody's footing the bill though, right? Is money spiritual for you now? What if you use your own money as a stepping stone? What if you earning money allows you yourself to work on yourself spiritually? After all, a business is something you offer to society or people around you as a service and in exchange they give you money. 
then a business can be seen as spiritual because serving people is spiritual, right? Take time and answer these questions and they will clear your misconceptions and give you more clarity. In the end, you will come to realize there is no such thing as a spiritual career, but there can be a person who realizes the spiritual nature of himself or existence. Now, I've packed a lot of my experience into this video, but I've acquired this perspective over a long period of time. So don't rush it, don't sweat it, it will take you time in order to digest and process this information and then arrive at your own decision. Book recommendation, just so uh, you have certain basics clear. This is Ikigai. I will leave the link below and uh, hope this helps. Take care and see you in the next one.